All right, so everybody is blowing up. about this whole Ted Cruz in Cancun thing. Saturday Night Live, which I could have gone the rest of my life without ever actively being conscious of S of Saturday Night Live's existence again since I was like 15, if it weren't for the fact that a clip from the show started showing up in memes and I got recommended the link to the clip. Being that I'm not a 40 plus year old Gen Xer, uh, I don't watch Saturday Night Live. Um, well, a 40 year old Gen X, 40 plus year old Gen Xer or just very far left person in general, I don't watch Saturday Night Live. I mean, hell, my old YouTube channel, uh, before I nuked it, was more relevant than Saturday Night Live, okay? And my subscribers were in the double digits, okay? But, um, people are blown up about Ted Cruz taking a trip to Cancun, and I watched this clip. I didn't watch the whole thing, uh, just the Ted Cruz part, and... Everything that these people said was wrong. Just the whole thing was garbage. It was trash. Um, it basically all relied on people not knowing how things work. I mean, they're leftists, so what do you? What else? Do, what do you expect? But um, I mean, this was an, an this was an egregious example. Because here's the thing. Ted Cruz taking a vacation to Cancun while the Texas ice storm was going on literally had no effect whatsoever on anything ever at all in the world. Now you might be saying, oh, but a lot of people were talking about it. A lot of people are crapping on Ted Cruz now. Yeah, they were already going to. It's, it's the Ted Cruz haters that are saying these things while Ted Cruz supporters, while they may think a little less of him now, they might think it was bad optics. I mean, sure, it was bad optics, sure, to be fair, uh, at the very least. But here's the thing people seem to not understand. There was no winning play here for Ted Cruz. As far as, like, as far as leftists, as far as his haters go, there's, there's no winning play. I mean, there never is. That's the point of haters, but... Let me let me let me put it to the, let me put it to you this way. What could Ted Cruz have done if he canceled this Cancun vacation? And look, I'm not like trying to be over here simping for Ted Cruz or anything. I'm just trying to point out how stupid people are about everything all the time. Or ignorant. How how I'm trying to point out the at best misguided lack of critical thinking that people have about freaking everything all the time. Because if you're genu genuinely thinking that Ted Cruz taking this vacation to Cancun was some like awful thing, at best you are misguidedly lacking in critical thinking about the scenario. Because let's ask the question here. Let's think critically for a moment. Let's ask this question. What could Ted Cruz have done if he hadn't gone to Cancun? If he had canceled this probably pre-planned vacation with his family, and then he had stayed in Texas, what could Ted Cruz have done? Um... He could offer empty platitudes to the people of Texas and talk about how his thoughts and prayers were going out to them. Uh, he could... Oh, wait, that's it. That's it. <sighs> Ted Cruz is a United States senator representing the state of Texas in the Senate. And I'm going to digress here a little bit, too, by the way. When I say he's Ted Cruz is representing the state of Texas in the Senate, I mean literally he's representing the state of Texas, okay? Um, Two-minute history course here for you. you. You know how back in the day only white male landowners could vote? And then over time we 
we modified the system. We Most people will agree we improved on it by making it not restricted to white landowning males. Um, so when it comes to the Founding Fathers' intention and view for the country, for this great experiment that they, that they set up, um, it wasn't perfect. They weren't perfect, to, be, to, to put it lightly. But one could make the argument that when we you know, ratified the 14th Amendment, allegedly, uh, and um, we opened up voting to people who were not white, landowning, and male, to people who, were, who, who diverged from that on any three of the categories... We were still preserving the idea behind the system, but just modifying and expanding it to bring it into more modern times, where things like being a woman or being black were not uh, looked down on to the same degree that they were back then. Um, but... Even back then, even when only white land-owning males could vote, they couldn't vote for everybody, okay? You have the House of Representatives and the Senate. Have you ever wondered why we have the two? Why we need them both? Have you ever wondered what the point is of having both? Because, you know, the House will draft a bill, and they'll vote on it, and they'll, pa they'll run it through their committees, they pass it. Then they got to send it over to the Senate, and the Senate's got to do their own thing. they got to send it through their committees, modify it their way send it back to the house and then they do this little game of tennis and then finally it can get to the president's desk to be signed into law okay that's like the the oversimplified version like the fast track version of it why do that well here's the thing back in the day these white landowning males could vote for their state governments so the, the the federal government had nothing to do with how they voted for their own state governments but um they could vote for the president they could vote for their House representatives. Oh, but even the white land-owning males could not vote for their senators. The senators were chosen by the state legislatures because the reason we have the two houses originally was because the House of Representatives was to represent the people to the government of the United States, and the Senate was to represent the states, the states themselves. So a senator originally... Going by the, 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 the idea behind the whole system, are not even supposed to represent the people. They're supposed to, in, in some way, kind of do the opposite. Represent the state. Okay? So, Senator Ted Cruz, according to the vision uh, that the Founding Fathers had for a country, is not even there to represent the people of Texas. He's there to represent, literally, the state of Texas. Okay? The idea of voting for your senators... Is a, is a newer thing. Like, originally you voted for your representatives and your state voted for the senators because the senators were to represent the states themselves. So the point of the bills being passed between the houses was to balance the will of the people and their needs and desires versus the will of the state itself and their... Uh, the states, the several states, the many states, whatever, and their desires and needs. So Ted Cruz is a senator, a U.S. senator from the state of Texas. He holds no legislative power, let alone executive power, in the state of Texas. Ted Cruz cannot snap his fingers or sign his pen and make literally anything happen in the state of Texas. Let's say Ted Cruz had decided to... Ted, Ted Cruz was faced with a choice. He could go on this vacation with his family, like he planned, or he could stay home in Texas and, you know, send out a video on the news and the internet and saying, you know, my heart goes out to the people of Texas going through this crisis. You know, our thoughts and prayers are with you. I will be talking to the governor and this, that, and the third on the phone um, to try to, you know see if we can get something done. Basically just a bunch of empty platitudes like politicians do. <sighs> do you think the Daisy Ridleys of the world and the whoever the fuck these irrelevant actors on, on Boomer Night Live are 
would have appreciated that. Do you think he would be getting all this, all kinds of positive PR if he had stayed in Texas and just thrown out empty platitudes to the people of Texas? Um, because that, that's, that's his list of options. Go on the vacation or stay home and deliver empty platitudes. That's literally the exhaustive list of Ted Cruz's options in this scenario. That's literally it. Sure, he can call the governor on the phone. Last I checked, he can do that from Cancun, too. Maybe Cruz supporters in Texas would have appreciated the sign of solidarity. Again, if you, if you want to say that it was bad optics and that it was overall a bad move, sure. I'll agree with you that it was bad optics. I'll give you, you know, your opinion that it wasn't the right thing to do, that he should have shown solidarity to his supporters. I'll give you that. But all these people talking about Cruz is a coward, he's selfish, and Daisy Ridley's epic clap back at Ted Cruz. It's, it's all so tiring, guys. It's all so tiring. Look, I don't want to go off onto a whole other topic, but long story short, it's no longer about left wing versus right wing or Democrat versus Republican at this point. Really, it's zombies versus people. And people can vary wildly in whether they're left wing or right wing, whether they're progressive or conservative, whether they vote Democrat or Republican, uh, whether you know they, they're socially conser- or liber- socially conservative or liberal or, or economically conservative or liberal. It's about the mindless mainstream media drones versus people who question, okay? It's people who question the narrative versus people who don't. That's that's the that's the the the, the line in the sand that's been drawn. That's the battle lines now. Because we don't have time or resources to argue whether we should be socially or economically left or right wing at this point, okay? We've got to determine who is just on board with defying the mainstream media narrative. My COVID lockdown's good. My, qu- my quintuple mask's good. My all vaccines are 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 all created equal and are good and safe and we we know this because we blindly trust the people saying they are. Um, never mind that there's a law that you can't sue a vaccine manufacturer if you have an adverse side effect to it because they're literally legally immune from any consequences that the vaccine may give you, but it doesn't matter because the vaccines can't possibly have negative consequences uh, ever anyway. No vaccine ever can. If it's a vaccine, it is automatically good and safe and positive and good. All of that, all of that put together is the, the, the Twitter, MSNBC, mainstream establishment, Borg, hive mind collective. And then you have people like me and some people that I know who are pretty progressive, pretty socially and economically liberal compared to me. And they'll say, yeah, it was bad optics. It wasn't the right move, but they'll agree that the, that the celebrities who are the most mindless hive mind people, the class of people alive, being a celebrity means being part of the mainstream establishment media narrative and literally not thinking for yourself, or at least not speaking for yourself. If you're a celebrity and you want to succeed in the celebrity business, you literally cannot speak anything but the narrative. Okay. So people, uh, people who are, who have very different political opinions than me, Oh, it doesn't matter. The differences between our political uh, opinions, we don't have time for that. We're on board with the idea that it's the mindless, speechless, hive mind collective mainstream media narrative who's pushing 
all this, who's just dunking on Ted Cruz because they can, because, oh, it's an easy opportunity. Ooh, zinger! Got those ratings, got those clicks on that SNL clip that nobody under the age of 40 would have watched had it remained on dinosaur-ass TV where it belongs, that nobody under the age of 40 would have watched if it hadn't been pushed into people's recommended sections. That is the, ooh, epic clapback, epic zinger on Ted Cruz. Dude, shut up. Okay, I've got bills to pay. I've got work to go to. I have exercise to put in. I don't have time for your late epic Reddit Twitter clapbacks against Ted Cruz. I'm making this video. I'm spending 15 and a half minutes so far talking about how much time I don't have to spend on the topic about which I'm making this video. Kind of oxymoronic in a way, but sure, whatever. I'll, I'll do it. But what really bamboozles me about this whole thing is that the people who make time for this kind of, of, of nothingness, these, these lay epic clapbacks against Ted Cruz, these, these SNL skits, the people who make time for it, they are... It's like they're giving up normalcy to be more normal in a sense. They're giving up being a, a a normal, a functional human being in order to be part of a collective and be normalized into that collective. It's sort of, again, oxymoronic in a way. You're, you're acting abnormal by human baseline levels in order to fit into this large collective of people who all equally act abnormal. And because it's, it's the norm to be abnormal, basically. It's the norm to waste your time on 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 Daisy Ridley's epic clapbacks against Ted Cruz, it's normal to 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 look at uh, to look at just absolute shittery like the SNL skit and think, "Ooh, this is good." It's not good. The acting was subpar at best. The writing was just the writing was. They're not even trying to hide it anymore because they know they don't need to. They're not hiding their bias. They're not trying to hide the lack of effort, the lack of love. They're not trying to hide the fact that they don't care about comedy. It's not about comedy. It's not about making people laugh because something was funny. It's about making people laugh because person I don't like got made fun of by lay epic clapbacker Z snappers on, on Boomer Night Live, on Gen X Live. Why? Why do people do this? It just confuses me more than anything. I'm not angry at it. I'm not angry at people for spending their time on, 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 on Daisy Ridley, of all people. Someone who literally is irrelevant to me. Like, she's irrelevant to everybody some people excluded. But I mean, Daisy Ridley does not impact the existence of 99.99% of, of Americans. She's in a movie. She acted in a movie. And I'm not going to say anything about her performance or anything, because that's irrelevant. What I'm saying is Daisy Ridley acted in a movie. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. See, this is the thing overall, is that these celebrities, these elites, the, 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 I don't know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of another actor off the top of my head. I'm just, I'm blanking on it. But the Bill Gates, is, you know, I talked about this before. The Bill Gates is of the world. The Jeff Bezos is of the world. The um, Susan Wojcicki's or whatever is of the world. The Joe Biden's of the world. And then you've got the celebrities, you know. You've got the, I don't know, fucking Clint Eastwood's of the world. I don't know, we just watched one of his old-ass movies the other night. Um, but I know he's on the same shit as everybody else, so whatever. These people don't know us. Sure, we all knew that. Stop acting like you know them. Stop acting like they're in your lives. Stop giving them the time of day beyond what they do. They have a job, okay? Their job is to go act in movies and TV shows. Stop acting like they're any more than that. Stop acting like Daisy Ridley is more than an actress on a screen. Stop acting like she impacts your life once those credits roll. Just stop it. 
Just stop acting like these people have impact on your life because they don't. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can leave the hive mind collective and become your own person and be the most progressive, socially, economically liberal, Marxist, anarchist you want to be. I don't care. Just stop treating people like more than they are because they have money and and, 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 a, and a glamorous job. Stop acting like any of these actors and actresses matter to you once those credits start rolling. More so, I mean, than the average Joe Schmo down the street, right? I'm not saying you can't consider them human beings or that they matter as far as humans, but stop. Let, let me let me put it to you this way then. Stop acting like Daisy Ridley is any different than the random woman you see walking down the street after those credits roll. She's not. She's no different. And the sooner we st all start acting that way, the sooner they will learn themselves. Snoop Dogg thinks that he's still some gangster from Long Beach, California, and then he goes out and and and, and spouts all these all this establishment nonsense from like Cop Mala Harris. Because these people think they're more than they are. They think they're better than you and me. This ties back into the one of the last videos I made. Stop treating these people like they're better than they are start turning the other cheek and if you don't if that doesn't mean what you what i think you think it should means what you think i think you th should think it means go go back and watch the video called roman hands but stop treating daisy ridley like she matters any more than anybody in this neighborhood that i live in once those credits roll because she doesn't so stop acting like she does sure she's a person her life matters that's it, though. That's it. That's the extent of it. The same as everybody in this little podunk neighborhood I live in in Indiana. She's no different from any of these people once those credits roll. So stop acting like she is. This is North Sea Hero, signing out.